spider shit the making of the song and video for wake up let's start with music so the entire project starts with the song so i'm going to dive through each section of the song the instruments uh the samples the automations um and everything in between so let's just start with the intro here and then we'll break it down So I left a lot of room for the vocal sample to breathe. This vocal chop right here really makes the entire song to the base of it. So I just let it run through the entire song here, as you can see. Um, so let's play just that. And then you get some of that bird ambiance too. And you get into second eight bar here. So all I did with this, it's same as the first eight bar. I just went in and added a little bit um, more of a variety with those vocal chops. So that's kind of the first piece of the drop right there. Let's just play through piano first, chord progression, some of the instruments. So there's the pluck sound in there now, which comes in on the drop. Let's bring in some of the drums here. Let's play just the drums actually. So pretty straightforward. Let me just do layer by layer here on these drums. And then we get into the main drop where basically I'm just gonna play it, just the instruments that come in. The only difference is adding some shakers to fill the high sounds, the uh, high frequencies here. So. So that's all that changes between um, kind of this pre-drop and the actual drop. So let's play that here. So we got the vocal chops here. I just, like I said earlier, I just changed the variety and pattern throughout the entire song just to kind of build a um, story, make it tense, let it release. So on the drop, different pattern than um, the bridge and the intro and whatnot throughout the whole song. So get that and then added a few more instruments right here. And then um, that repeats throughout the whole song. I add a few more varieties throughout the bridge here. I wanna talk about what I did with the vocal sample here. I added a lot of reverb here, so I'm not gonna play through every section start to finish, but um, we'll go through this right here. <laughs> So right here, um, to build some tensity, some tensity, <laughs> some intensity, I don't know, to just make it more unique um, for the buildup, 
Um, I changed the bell pattern um, with some of the other plucks, the pads, changed that around. Um, and then I added a lot of reverb to the vocals here. So I want to play with the sounds like with and without it. So you can really um, see the difference. So then with these automations. So then mix that all together. So same thing, pattern 10 here. All I did was remove the bass underneath this and build up right here into the drop. So then the drop is exactly the same as uh, the first drop. I think I messed around with some of the plucks and whatnot, maybe messed around with the uh, melody for that last eight bar there. Uh, so let's just play through it, give it a listen. In. We add the shaker, the snare here, fill those high frequencies. And the song fades out from there so i just added a repeat of that first one and changed up kind of that lead sound um, just to build up the story a little bit more add a little bit more variety and the song fades out so that's the entirety of the song um it's only made up of 24 tracks so pretty simple one few automations on some of those samples some of the plucks and the pads um but yeah the vocal sample the vocal chops really make it with this song it guides it um, just adding a lot of variety throughout the song to spice it up and that's that next up how we filmed it All right, so for filming it was pretty straightforward um, Here's all the gear that I used so for the audio I used my zoom h4n Recorder to get nice clean audio and I did the voiceover for lighting I used this siru light tube for some of the indoor stuff I like it because it extends out Double the length so it's easy to transport and carry around and just turns on and you can change the color temp and the um, brightness on the back. It has this nice stand. Um, it's like my favorite light to use, two of these, and you can pretty much light any scene that you need, but I'm also not a professional lighting guy, so. And then for the actual filming, I used a Sony a7S III with um, mainly the 24 to 70 zoom lens right here. Yes, this is the Sony a7 III. I'm currently filming with the a7S III right there. Um, with this lens right here, the 24 to 70 and yeah this was the main setup and then obviously a nice ND filter to make sure that everything um, was properly exposed to keep the aperture as low as possible not to get too much into the nitty-gritty but this ND filter is a quarter pro mist as well so it adds a nice bloom to the footage to make it a little bit softer and then some of the shots I also used a gimbal so it basically just stabilizes it so instead of handheld walking and getting a lot of shaky motion um, using a gimbal I could make sure that it is nice and stabilized if I'm moving around and then obviously I was filming myself a lot so I used my trusty Manfrotto tripod which is really easy to travel around with 
I love this thing. And there you go. That's all the gear I used to film. Last but not least, the edit. All right, so we're in Premiere here with our edit. So the final step of the process is creating the whole video. Now that we created the song and we filmed it. So every video starts with audio. So first off, here's our song down here. I'm gonna solo this track. So that's the song we made. And after that, we want to tell the story, right? So I wrote a script um, and put that underneath, which you'll find right here. I tried being the chorus guy. Yeah. I tried being the cinematic guy. And that goes throughout the whole video. It wasn't all bad. I got better at filming. I got better at editing. I picked up a lot of new skills and I got better at the basics. So that's our whole um, script that we wrote and put audio to it and just mixed the levels of the song around when I'm speaking so that both can play through and tell the story how I want to. Um, and I guess um, a little pro tip that I learned a few years back is you want to keep your levels between negative six and negative three. You never want it to peak at zero. So make a choice. I had to hit a full. You'll see right there, everything is between negative six and negative three. So just adjusting the gain. So eight decibels on all of the talking pieces and then um, negative eight on the song. And then I was just manually raising up and down. So that's the whole base of the track is the song and the voiceover that makes the entire track the most important part of it. And then from there, we basically just fill it with visuals that are going to tell the story how we want it. So let's go through some of the scenes and how I went about them here. So everything is organized pretty nice and neat inside the footage. So art list, boring shit scene, course scene, editing, money, music making. So every single scene that I recorded um, is in there. This specific video, I didn't need to create a select sequence just because I knew where everything was going to be laying in pretty easily pretty easily and pretty precisely, but if I had a lot of B-roll to go through, I would create a specific sequence that I would drag everything into this timeline for. Um, so this first scene right here, I'm talking about being the chorus guy, so I filmed the scene of me with a drone. Then right here, the cinematic guy, so I filmed another scene of me um, with the camera and hat on going cinematic vibes and travel guy. Social media guy, another scene right here. So these are all um, individual scenes that I set up and filmed after um, I wrote that script and laid it in the timeline. So just kind of going through this entire thing, you get the general gist of it. There's not much um, to talk about with it. This is kind of the straightforward part. It's filming it. Um, here's another scene I got in full clothes in the ocean to kind of signify a reset. Um, back to the drone scene, back to that scene. So you get the general idea of it. In terms of the visuals, it's very, very straightforward from left to right. A piece that I'll talk about with it that uh, it's good to know is just kind of the color grading process here. So what's a good frame so this frame right here so i use dehancer so that's without anything on it that's the raw clip and then if you go here boom that's what it is when i color grade it with dehancer so um, i love dehancer you can add really cool grains and textures to the footage naturally to give it that film look and it has color profiles based off your camera which is uh really, really helpful. So that's the whole story left to right with the footage down here. So everything you see down here is all that footage. And then these other layers above it are um, effects. So right here, I wrote on my iPad. So as you see the chorus guy come up on screen there, what I did is I wrote that on the screen. So to take that off, and then I went in and just changed the blending mode on it right here. So I put it to screen. So normal, you'll see that's just on black. It's black on white, but um, turning it to screen gets rid of the black. And then I put turbulent displacement so that it has like a little bit of wave movement to it. 
So I did that throughout the whole video. Um, and I just did some basic effects like right here. Had that pop up on the screen, roughing the edges of that clip right there. So it's a little more modern looking. Um, um, right here, um, I downloaded this just from um, our grid. It's just a cool clip that I liked that I'm talking about shutting down. So boom, I put that over it, put that kind of like curse words over it. Um, same thing here. And that's the gist of it in terms of the visuals. It's very straightforward and that's why um, creating um, a good story underneath the audio is most important with any video to tell the story. And then as long as you do a good job in pre-production knowing what you need to capture, you just check off the shots you need and pop them in, color grade them. Um, and then the last piece of it is the sound design, which is down here. It's very minimal, but that's everything in between here and then some of these um, in-camera audio as well. So um, if you turn off, I'm gonna turn off the um, audio track, which I did, and voiceover, so you can just hear just the sound design. And it's just complimentary. I didn't do much to it, but you can just get a general vibe of it. So I had the writing sound come on um, as I had that. Just some nice simple sounds in camera audio. Typing for when that's coming on. So the sound design really just makes the video honestly it's the most important piece audio is the most important piece of any video in my opinion um it kind of like helps you actually dive into it and feel it a lot more without any of the sound design it's just like feels very 2d very static you don't feel like you're in it so um sound design very important i'm not anything crazy with it but just adding it to complement the voiceover and the song with the visuals with the nice color grade on it really just brings the entire video together. So that's the entirety of the video, um, starting with the audio down there, the song, the voiceover, the sound design, then the visuals, everything was pre-planned. Um, so all the shots were really easy to put in. But if I show you right here in terms of organization, you'll see what I mean. So we have any, we have assets, we have audio, which is voiceover, we have the exports of the final video, we have our footage music and project files. So inside the footage, see how everything is just organized based off of everything that I shot. Um, so when I went in and dropped it in, it was honestly a pretty easy edit just cause I had everything done and organized in pre-production. So I knew just check off the shot, lay it in, done. Um, add some cool overlays on top of it, spice it up a bit. And I think it tells the story that I wanted to and I'm pretty happy with it.